guys, Joe here, the guy who says, come Nerevar, friend or traitor come, and I'm here to talk about UFC 285, because what a card. So, I'm, I'm not 100% happy with the results, but who is ever, right? Who goes into a fight card and leaves with every one of my guys won? That's just, I think that's happened maybe twice ever in the times I've watched you know, MMA and been a lifelong fan, but there's a lot to talk about. So, enough talk, let's get to the fights. Because our main event, we had a vacant heavyweight title with John Jones and Cyril gone, and uh, so come out out of the way, get this out of the way early. Um, I I don't like John Jones as a fighter or a person. Don't like him at all. Um, I feel like I, I have a lot of critiques with him. I could go into detail, but I'm gonna be here all day if I do. So as and as a as a fighter, as a person, I don't know if we got enough time, but in the world, you know. But, uh, and I'm always really impressed with Cyril Gaunt, but I'm going to come at this professionally and, yeah. Um, so this fight, out of the gate, low blow to John Jones. Yeah, not fun. Cyril Gaunt gets swarmed, he gets pressured, and I honestly have been struggling to write this and talk about this without sounding disrespectful. So I'm just going to start with the facts of what happened. Jones nearly gets the back. He gets him down briefly, Gon gets up, then he presses Gon to the cage, gets him back down. Gon is trying to wall walk and has his neck out. Well, he gets it snatched up in a guillotine choke. He escapes, and then he he just puts his neck, sticks his neck out again in the same position, and Jones is like, okay, I guess I'll just do this again. I'm going to get it this time, and he gets it, and he gets the tap. There, there you go. That, that was the fight. Um, so, uh, as much as I, you know, I have a lot I could say about this fight, I will say this. Uh, I am of the belief that, you know, that that's kind of a crazy performance from John Jones. I, I don't think he has very many performances against top talent that are like, oh, that's the guy. You know, I never found myself really ever doing that because, I mean, let's be honest, heavyweight and light heavyweight are historically the two weakest divisions um, in the UFC and in MMA in general. So it's really kind of hard for me to, like, really go, eh, yeah, sure, you're pound for pound, or you're the GOAT because of that, you know? Um, but, like, I feel like whenever, I, I'm going to be honest, this is how I feel, I wonder, after this performance, was I overhyping Gone? This is a guy I heard about, I went and watched all his pre-UFC fights, I kept watching his pre-UFC fights, and then when he got to the UFC, made his debut, I watched it, hunted it down the day of, and watched it live, and I watched every one of his fights live, because this is a guy I was kind of building up as, like, the future of the division, this is a guy who bounces on his toes for 20 minutes, or 25 minutes, and doesn't really seem that tired, great cardio, that's insane at heavyweight, as a as a super kicker, and um, I, I kind of wonder, after this performance and the Ngannou performance, if I've been overhyping him, because it seems like his grappling has gotten worse, he offered no resistance, and... Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to be the guy to question your, I, 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 I'm not questioning his grappling talent or his preparation or his will, his willpower, will to fight and continue on. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of, I'm, I'm not questioning it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm a, I can critique it. I feel like a little bit and say, I'm not that impressed. I, I don't know. I, I feel like something's going on there. Uh, I, I feel like his grappling has gotten worse. He kind of just gave up the choke and got it and tapped. It was odd. You know, and I think it's incredibly impressive if you can make me say that about your opponent. That's an insane performance if you have me kind of befuddled in that. So credit to John Jones. It's fantastic. Fantastic performance. Um, I thought he didn't really have a chance in this fight. I got to be honest. I thought Gon was going to uh, use his footwork, use low kicks to beat up them chicken legs all night, and then just tee off on him and just kind of kind of think of it as like the tie to Ivasa fight without with Gon getting hit less. They, I kind of expected that in a sense. Um, if I'm being honest, I thought it'd be a, primarily a striking affair as John doesn't grapple anymore. His He doesn't care to. He, he's been wanting to do this weird slow kickboxing match and lose, in my opinion, to Dominic Reyes uh, in him. So, I don't know. It's very odd. V uh, very odd. And he, but Jones came out here, shut me the hell up, got it going. Hey, um, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. Is John Jones the GOAT? 
Now, that's a subjective opinion, I think. I think that's a subjective topic, I should say. So I'm going to give my two cents. John Jones, in my mind, will never, ever be the GOAT, and he'll never even be in the conversation to be a GOAT because he's popped hot. That That's my opinion. So um, I know you. if you're a John Jones fan, you might disagree with me, and that's 100% okay because, once again, this is all about opinions. This is just my opinion. And um, you might even say my opinion doesn't matter. I've, I've seen that response this week during fight week about John Jones. My, your opinion doesn't matter. And you know what? You're also right. My opinion doesn't matter. But I still have one, and that's okay. We all got one, you know? And this is just mine. I think if you pop hot once, I now have to question every one of your fights. Because, well, if even if it was just a little bit, I, but that means you might have been coming down when you got caught. What about two weeks ago when you weren't tested and your levels were through the roof? Or what about fights you didn't get caught for? What if you were going crazy beforehand? And that's not even with the personal stuff. I don't care about the personal stuff, at least when it comes to the GOAT contention, you know. Um, I, I do and I don't. Like, it, it doesn't, it shouldn't factor in, despite the fact that it's going to be in the back of my head. But it shouldn't factor in because you don't bring that in the cage with you. You don't bring your history and all, and all that stuff in there. All you bring is you yourself. And if there's roids in your system, that's going in there too. That's just how it is. Um, for me, the goats are GSP one. I got Mighty Mouse at two currently, but I'm kind of skeptical on that one. But I, I do say him at two. I think if Cejudo beats Sterling, we gotta have him in that conversation. It's time to have it. You know, um, he's at least got the pound for pound head size going. But and if and I, a hypothetical here, but if Habib would have stayed, he beat Charles, he beat Chandler, and he potentially would have fought Volkanovski and beat him. Let's say in this hypothetical, he would be my goat. But he didn't. That's just how it is. So GSP is the goat in my opinion. That's the greatest ever. But what's next for heavyweight? Because there's another elephant in the room, Francis Ngannou, who isn't in this fight because he wanted to get paid more than forty dollars per fight. And uh, because he stood up for himself and wanted more money, he got fired. And that's rough. So I, I think that kind of puts a little bit of a cloud over this, in my opinion. But look for Curtis Blades or Sergei Pavlovich, the winner of that fight, to be the next contender to John Jones. Now, for the co-main event of the evening, we have Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grosso in a women's flyweight title fight. So I got two roads here. That's how I look at this. I got two roads. On one road, I can be the good guy. I can be the good guy, and, you know, I just, I bring up how me and Carl had questions about this division getting better, and Shevchenko, in her last title defense, struggled. So now we have to wonder if she's going to struggle against other contenders that that in this new wave of very talented contenders that have making this division good. Or, I can become the super villain and just antagonize Shevchenko fans. But I'm not going to do that, because that's that's not how I roll. As much of an MF Doom fan as I am, I mean, I have the mask, I, I'm going to choose to remain professional and respectful, because let's be honest, I've had a good amount of interactions with Shevchenko fans since being on this channel, and all, all of them, except for one, have been great. They've been fantastic. We can disagree on something and still be respectful and cool with each other. And I, I, I love that. I, I appreciate that. That's what makes this sport great. That's what makes you guys the best fans ever, I think. You know, call me biased on that one, but I got to give it up to you guys. You guys are fantastic. I love interacting with all you guys. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just break down the fight. And it would be terrible of me to just antagonize you guys, even though, because I'm not a Shevchenko fan and everybody kind of knows it. I'm not going to do that. That's not cool of me. We're all friends here. You know what I mean? So let's just break down this fight. I had a 2 1 Grosso going into the fourth. I thought Grosso came out and it was like she was listening to me. Oh, she like watches the show or something. Because I always talk about you kick a kicker. You want to jam those airways up and cause traffic. And she was doing that to take away the kicks when she could. She was using low kicks to punish the defensive footwork of Shevchenko. She was switching stances mid-combination or at a safe distance. Then she was punishing the hand fighting with her own combinations as well. Beautiful. I, I thought she was winning the striking for basically the entire fight. 
she had the cleaner shots landed and with a higher volume of shots with her hurting the champion and the striking exchanges at times. Valentina, to her credit, used her strength advantage, got Grasso down, held her down. It kind of mirrored the Santos fight for me, where she would hold, get her down and kind of Jake shield her, you know, just hold her down, not really do much. Um, except for in the second round, I will say. Second round, she was really going for stuff. But in the first and third, I really wasn't feeling like she was going for much. Um, but that said, that's it scored points in the Santos fight for me, so it scored points for me here. You know, I just felt like a majority of the fight was taking place on the feet, and here Grosso was having a clear advantage, so I kind of leaned towards that. Um, at least in the first and third round. Third round is the really close one, by the way. I, that one, I, I understand if you have it one way or the other, in my opinion. That's a pick em round. But the first round, easily Grosso. Second round, easily Shevchenko. She nearly got her in the crucifix, was working for it. Pretty good. And uh, uh, she was kind of struggling. She was do landing the double legs very well. But she, after getting a head and arm choke, or a head and arm uh, tie up to get the throw, um, after it was kind of clear that she was going to go for that, when they were just kind of standing in the neutral of sorts, Grosso was kind of tagging her, lighting her up a little bit on that. So very good adjustment. And the finish came in the fourth round after Valentina missed a spinning back kick. It was sidestepped. Kind of a risky maneuver. Spinning attacks, pretty risky, because your opponent can just kind of step in on you and get the back. Look at Uriah Hall and Robert Whitaker, for an example. Or now this fight. Kind of a risky move with no real setup. Just kind of goes for it. Just why not, kind of thing. And she gets punished. She gets her back taken. Grosso has her back. Puts in this gnarly choke. And, like, look at the pictures after the fight. There's a picture where it's like, it was more of a neck crank. You can see where her arm was after, on, like, her chin and, like, like a little bit of the neck of how tight it was. It was, like, two-tone because, you know, she's red from all, like, the fight and the adrenaline and the sweating and stuff. But then it was, like, her normal skin tone where the choke was. It is nuts. It was so tight. And Shevchenko taps. Ale Alexa Grasso becomes the third Mexican-born champion. You know, we have three of them currently, which is amazing for me, being half Mexican and proud of it. And the first ever female-born Mexican champion. Wow, and on a bittersweet note, I gotta bring this up. Congratulations, Alexa Grasso, because she has graduated from my boys slash gal stable. Time to bring in Macy Barber into the stable. It's time to just officially get her in and replace Alexa Grasso with her. And I know there's gonna be a rematch, I'd imagine so, um, which kind of sucks for me, because I want to see this division keep going, but I understand. Um, Shevchenko definitely deserves it, you know, I think, sure. Um, I just don't like immediate rematches unless it's like a controversial decision. But sure, you know, why not? Um... Let's see. I mean, I think it's kind of rough because I want Manon Faro and Aaron Blanchfield to kind of move up quick and start getting title shots. Let's start getting new new, new blood in this main event scene in this division, right? We have a chance now, but at the same time, you you got to, I'm sure you got to, you know, give her that rematch. I'm sure she wants it. Um, didn't really care for the post-fight talk of uh, Shevchenko, but I won't dwell too much on that one. Uh, this whole, well, I was winning. I mean, just one kick and oops, kind of nonchalantly. Rubbed me the wrong way, but hey, listen... Once again, I could be taking that wrong because I'm an Alexa Grasso fan, and I'm not a Shevchenko fan, so I'm, it's it's whatever, you know. I'm sure you're upset if you lose a title. So, I talked a ton about these fights, but I got to touch on the rest of the card because it was so good. Um, but I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one, which is Shavkat versus Jeff Neal. What a fight. Oh my god, that's probably my fight of the year so far. Um, Shavkat looks like a super stud, tons of mid-fight adjustments, just creating a bigger and bigger lead, but Jeff Neal... Hard shots with smooth hands put Shavkat in positions that he kind of had to kind of get through adversity, you know, and they were both kind of just going along. It was a little back and forth that while, but I just felt like Shavkat was building a bigger and bigger lead, even with the big bombs he was kind of taking. That was pretty scary at times. Um, great flurries, great attacks, and he ends up getting a rear naked choke, kind of, from like back clinch, just standing over him with like, and he ties up one leg. And then Jeff Neal taps, and then he lets go, and Jeff Neal went out, like, basically instantly. He just slumps to the ground. Gnarly finish. Shafkot moves to 17-0, 17 finishes. Incredible. This guy is the man. Uh, Matush Gamrot came out, survived some scary moments at times, but he managed to kind of stick on Jalen Turner for three rounds and took home a split decision. Um, a fear I had on the preview show was it's a little easier to take down the taller fighter, like the inverse of taking down the shorter Volkanovski for the uh, Makachev fight. A little easier for a uh, takedown a taller guy. And uh, we, we kind of saw that in this fight, but hey, credit to Gamrot. It wasn't a pretty win, but it's a very, very solid one on short notice, so good for him. And then Bo Nickel came out here and opened up the main card with uh, a show. 
you know, he might have hit a low blow. I in the I thought he did at first. We all did at my house. Then the replays, we weren't really sure. So maybe there's an angle we're missing. Tell me in the comments if there was um, an angle that did show where he did. But it seemed like in the first replay I saw, like maybe he didn't. Um, regardless, Bo Nickel looks impressive. He's like a young Ben Askren, but with better jiu-jitsu and actual like power in his hands. Um, he didn't really knock himself out on the first strike he threw, which was like throwing a high kick, and he like took a took a really nasty bump in pro wrestling. But uh, I'm really curious to see what they toss at him next. If they want to get him ranked, I could see them going with Andre Muniz or Brendan Allen. Both guys are ranked, and uh, they're both ranked dangerous, so it is a compelling fight, I think. But at the same time, they're not massively feared, so maybe they'll feel a little comfortable and they'll feel like they're not throwing him to the wolves. I think that sounds really cool to me. Cody Garbrandt showed off some great footwork against Trevin Jones, which is smart because you want to kind of cover up your weakness of being a little chinny or at least defensively uh, not so sound. He does tend to kind of come at you like that. So I think that was a very good you know, little wrinkle he's adding to his game or maybe adding back to his game because, you know, he did that with Cruz. Finally, Tricus Duplessis got a knockout, sort of, over Derek Brunson in a really late stoppage at the end of round two. Thankfully, the corner threw in the towel. Really awkward, I thought. I thought they should have called it, but whatever. And uh, But that's it for me. I will be back to cover Jan versus Marab Dishvali. And that's a fun fight because Jan's actually kind of beefed with Marab in the past, so that's interesting, I think. And as always, if you miss me, you know, I look cleaned up, I'm not, I don't look homeless anymore, then you can check me out on the main channel where I have the Retro Review playlist. I love doing these videos. Actually, I'm, we just finished uh, the second Patreon request, and I'm working on the third one currently. love doing that. So if there is a card, obviously, you know, you can go you know, make a recommendation for me. Um, but, you know, I love this fan interaction I have with you guys. It's always fantastic. It's always great. And my one year with the channel is coming up. So I am going to be looking and trying to do a little giveaway just from me to you guys. So uh, I'm going to try and look into it. I'm going to announce it next recap. So... Stay tuned. I got something cool. I'm Joe with the INC. Thank you guys for watching.